Secateurs are a useful tool for cutting small branches, twigs, what have you, in the garden. Uh, and they are considered to be a gardening tool. But if you happen to carry a twig stove, then you'll find them extremely useful because they will allow you to harvest the wood necessary to run that twig stove far more conveniently than you would be able to collect it with a saw or a knife or an axe or a hatchet. Because generally speaking, you are talking about finger-sized pieces of wood. Uh, and so for that, secateurs are the way to go. Now, there are a number of folding secateurs on the market that are sort of multi-tools, really. And so in a bushcraft context, because of their compact size and their utility, they make a really good option. We're going to have a look at three different models and see what you think. Stay tuned. So we're going to look at three different uh, folding secateurs. Now, each of these models are available under different brand names. As far as I can tell, I believe they're made in three separate factories, but I think any of these individual models, wherever you find it under whatever brand name, they're all made in the same factory and just have a different brand name put onto it. So they are all much of a muchness. But let's start off with this one. Now, uh, this one is under the Kirkland brand name, which uh, I don't know if you can see that there, but it's, it's just there. Uh, but again, you'll find these under different brand names. These have the um, wooden handle. Now, these are beechwood. Uh, the one real advantage of that is it's a bit more comfortable in cold weather if you're holding it barehanded to put your hand on the wood, although that exposed metal there uh, does feel cold, but it's not as bad as if the whole thing were metal. So that's the only real point to consider. They open up like any other multi-tool, but instead of a pair of pliers, you have the secateurs. You have a little latch to keep them locked shut, and they are spring-loaded, and they work. Now, this particular one, the hinge point uh, is not well made, in my opinion, and it can force these jaws apart. So there's a little bit of nuance to using them, which you'll see in the latter part of the film, uh, or of this video, rather, uh, as to how I do that. But they will cut wood, and, and they work. Now, this unlike the other two, have the most amount of actual tools, but you have to open it up to access them. So to begin with, we have a screwdriver with some small spanner holes there. Um, so it can be used to turn small uh, nuts and bolts. Next, we have a rather sharp little awl good for poking holes and things. And next to that is, here we go, the small flathead screwdriver. Next to the small flathead screwdriver, we've got a bottle opener. That looks like a bit of a wire stripper on the end, but you would need to Cut the insulation, but then that would actually push the insulation rather nicely. And finally, this one does have, and this is the big virtue, a small but nicely made uh, wood saw. So if you are cutting with this and you're not able to quite get through because you bit off more than you can chew because you've got too thick or too hard a piece of wood, then you can actually pull this out, reverse it, and then saw through that. So that's useful to have. It's a very, very useful feature. On the other side, we have a small knife blade, next to which is a Phillips head screwdriver. Next to that is a forward cutting can opener tin opener, useful to have if you're in the field for any length of time. And then finally, on the end, we have, if I hold it up closely, you should be able to see, you've got a little ruler marked in centimeters, and it's a five centimeter ruler. And on the other side is a file, like a nail file. So this has a decent range of tools. 
Now, this is meant very much for, in my opinion, light duty. Uh, this is not going to have the durability of something like a Leatherman, for example. This is, this is, it's okay, it's good, and it's cheap, but it's not the strongest one. Uh, I would say to have this in your back pack uh, as a backup, not a bad idea. It's okay. Not the strongest, not the best, but it's okay. And as long as you're willing to work with, um, work within its limits, this should actually be a useful tool. Now the next one also has some wooden handles and some metal, and it's more compact. It is physically smaller. It weighs less but it is actually much more sturdily built. There is just a better construction to this one. They've used better metal and they've actually made all the moving parts are connected uh, with better joints. So this will hold up to more abuse. That flare can be a little bit uncomfortable in the grip because it's pressing into the palm of your hand in an uncomfortable way. But again, open that up and you have a decent pair of secateurs which are spring loaded and actually do cut rather well. Now, this one has only four internal tools. To begin with, you have this weeding tool, which is used for removing roots and things like this, which again, if you're in the field, if you're uh, doing a bushcraft context and you are harvesting food from the environment, uh, some plants, you want the roots. You know, dandelion root, for example, makes a nice coffee substitute. So something like this is actually quite useful for harvesting certain uh, things out of the field. So that's actually a useful tool. And next to that, there is this, a serrated knife blade. Now, this is a change. This particular model, up until relatively recently, that was a saw blade. In the last year or so, they've modified it, they've changed it, and they've put this serrated edge on. Now, I know that some people like to have a serrated knife edge, but I would have preferred to have the saw blade. It's, in my opinion, if you're harvesting wood from branches and twigs, and it just turns out, oh, this one's just a little bit too thick and a little too chunky, that's not really going to help you a lot. If you're cutting something that's wet for certain jobs, that's very useful, admittedly. But if I had to have my druthers, I'd rather have the saw blade because that's going to be far more useful. So if you're buying one of these, be aware. They don't make them with the saw blades anymore. If you can find one with a saw blade, buy it. Um, but if you're getting one like this, bear in mind you, it doesn't come with the saw blade. On the other side, you then have this strange looking tool. Now that edge is sharpened and that's just a hook. And again, this is actually used in the garden for uprooting certain plants for, for weeding. But again, in a bushcraft context, that could be useful for harvesting certain kinds of food from the environment. And by the way, that hook shape is useful as a hook because I can actually use this to pick things up and carry it with or pull on things. For example, if I'm tightening a knot, uh, that sharpened end is actually sharp, and this hook end is not, so that it is actually quite a useful, I like it, it's a useful tool. And finally, you have what they've always had, this standard knife blade, um, just an ordinary pocket knife blade. Uh, I, you know, it's not the best steel in the world, but it is what it is. It's, it's keep it sharp, it'll do a good job. As I say, I don't really see the point of having that and the serrated blade. It was much better before when you had this knife blade and a saw blade. If they wanted a change to a serrated blade, they might have changed this one to that and left the saw blade, but they did what they did. Is this useful? Yes. Is it compact? Yes. Does it take up practically no space and is it inexpensive? Yes. So this is actually quite a good one to have in your kit. But bear in mind, uh, it doesn't have the saw. Of course, if you have another saw with you, that isn't necessarily an issue. But that's something to be aware of. Finally, we're going to look at the one that I 
actually like the most out of these. And this one actually comes with a sheath. Uh, this one, the brand name on it is Traveler, but this is available from several different manufacturers. Like I say, I think they're all being made in the same factory, and I think uh, they're just putting different logos on them. And they're doing a few little cosmetic things. But these are quite distinctive because they're asymmetric. And the asymmetry on these makes them quite visually distinctive. But if you find one of these that looks this way, I don't care what the brand name is. They're all the same. They are really durable. They're the heaviest of the three. And the largest, as we saw before, this one is smaller than that. On the other hand, this one is larger. But it does come with that sheath, so it's that's a nice feature. The other nice feature about this is that although it has only a few tools, they are all accessible from the outside. So, for example, first of all, I have this knife blade, and I don't have to open it up to access it, so that's actually quite useful. It's a decent size. It's meant as a pruning knife, but it is actually decent. And next to that, we have the saw blade. And this is actually quite a decent size saw blade. A um, couple of inches long, I should think. Uh, six, seven centimeters, say six or seven centimeters, something like that. The teeth are raked backwards, so this is very much a pole saw. So the push stroke isn't going to cut out. If you have good stable, you can just go back and forth. Or uh, if you don't have a lot of uh, stability because you're holding a stick, you could just literally just pull it out and just keep going this way and just every pull will cut. And these teeth do cut reasonably well. So it's a decent saw. I like it. And again, if the secateurs have bitten into something that's a little bit too difficult to get through just snipping, you've got that saw blade immediately to hand to use. On the other side, uh, like our last pair, it has one of these V-shaped pruning tools. This one quite nicely sharpened on the inside and again for uprooting certain things if you're harvesting plant matter for foraging food that's quite useful. The only other tool this has is a little bit on the odd side and that's this little circle here. Now that's actually meant for a lanyard and if you're not using it it flips out of the way. I will say, if you are in a bushcraft context and you are making arrows for uh, survival or what have you, uh, you can potentially use that as an arrow straightener. It's a bit of an art. It's not for everyone. And really, normally, this is going to stay inside of the handle unused because unless you want to attach it to a lanyard. Uh, but there we go. This one also has a much more positive action when you open it up. So that pulls down, and then this one pulls down, and that clicks in, sh in place. And this one has, again, slightly larger jaws. So, and because it's asymmetric when it's closed, but it gives you a really good, comfortable grip. And this will actually power its way through some pretty tough wood. So I especially, and they're very sharp as well. Uh, I really like these. Um, and you have to remember to close them up before you close it up, but then it just shuts nicely. And again, you have this nice little nylon sheath with a bit of Velcro to keep it out of harm's way when you put it in your pack. So I like those. Uh, what I'm going to do now is we're going to step outside. It's a bit cold, wet, and icky out there, but we're going to just basically take a branch and we're going to chop bits off it using these just to demonstrate how they're used. And then you can uh, let me know what you think. See you in a moment. So we're going to have a quick look at how these work. Now, starting with this particular model, The actual pivot point is not as well made as you want it. So I wouldn't tend to cut it straight. What I would tend to do, you can twist it slightly anti-clockwise or clockwise. So if you're going anti-clockwise or straight, or counterclockwise and straight, 
uh, it's going to force the jaws apart. And because of the way that hinge point is made, you'll, you'll shorten the life of these greatly. Whereas if you twist it just slightly clockwise, you're actually forcing the jaws together, and it'll extend the life of this. And it will cut rather nicely. Uh, so these work, but there's that little bit of nuance in order to extend the life of twisting it slightly clockwise before pressuring down. Now, the next ones we're going to look at are these really compact ones. And uh, due to the way the hinge point is made on these, again, these are really strong. So this one will work. You don't have to do that slight twist. And it will just power through rather nicely. I mean, this piece of wood's about as thick as my little finger, and so it is just cutting through really easily. I mean, because the handle is shorter and because of the way it flares out, it's not the most comfortable grip. And there comes a point where it just, when it gets thick enough and strong enough, it just it's going to lock and stop. Now, if these had, as they used to, a saw blade uh, instead of this serrated edge, the serrated edge, it's not really going to deal with much with this. So this is actually where this one is flawed. The older version of this, and if you can get an older one that has the saw blade, that would be fine because where it locks up, uh, the saw blade could finish cutting through rather easily. Uh, you can rotate by 90 degrees and then clip across where you've been cutting, and, and it can do that. But these are pretty darn good, but they are a little bit limited because they lack the saw blade. So again, that is my one little bugbear about these. But otherwise, they're really compact, and they are actually pretty well made. Finally, we're going to come to these. And these ones, of course, quite nicely have a little pouch that they come with, as we saw before. Um... And again, these asymmetric ones, these are really well made. They are, I would say, the best quality. They have the largest pair of jaws, a really good grip, and they can power through even really thick pieces. But where, and that was a bit of tough going, but it managed to do it. Uh, I don't think the other two could have handled that particular piece there. But the other thing about this one that I especially like is, again, the fact that this one does come with a decent saw blade. And so if it is a pull saw, and it's just cutting through here like a hot knife through butter, I know I'm just doing the pull stroke here, uh, but it's on a branch. Have a, it's easier to go back and forth, but I'm just holding this. But this is actually quite a decent saw. So if you get to a really thick bit that the jaws won't handle, then, of course, you've got that saw, which is extremely useful. And again, you have a really good grip on these, and they will cut through nicely. Uh, the end of this stick, the first few cuts, by the way, that was pretty uh, spongy wood. It wasn't very strong. This is actually quite hard here, so these are coping. The others wouldn't have coped so well. And again, if you have the point where it's not going through, if you rotate around the way I'm doing here, and then a little twist of the wrist, that'll pop it off as well. Um, are folding secateurs useful? Well, again, if you have a twig stove, Yes, because you're going to be able to harvest wood more easily by snipping it off than by uh, having to saw everything or hack at everything with an axe or a, a knife or some other cutting tool. This is actually very, very convenient. So I would say that's probably the best one to have. Uh, if you just want a backup tool that's very lightweight, that one is excellent. 
if you want really cheap and cheerful and lots of extra tools uh, and you're only planning on light duty, I would say that one would be okay. But either way, these are useful to include in your kit. So those were folding Secatua multi-tools. I think they have a place in a backpack, particularly if you go camping or backpacking or what have you, using a twig stove for your cooking needs. I think they're really useful, even if you don't use a twig stove, but you're going to have a regular campfire just for collecting kindling. They are useful. They are practical. I don't believe they'll replace a normal multi-tool by and large, but in the grand scheme of things, it's just another useful bit of kit. And you may have seen some of these and wondered what the difference is between one model and another. And hopefully this has given you a bit of insight. If you have used one or more of these, or if you've used another model that we haven't covered in this particular video, uh, and would like, please mention it in the comments. I would be very grateful for any feedback. Uh, also, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing and like this video if you like it. And I hope to see you again soon. Have a good one.